All right, thanks. Okay, good morning. Uh, thanks for everyone's patience with our, our technological world. I see our chairman and both our other commissioners for the day. Um, and um, just preliminarily, uh, commissioners, all, um, all of the violation licensees are represented by council and I will acknowledge them as the case um, gets called. So with, with that, if the chair and the commissioners are ready, we can begin. Let's begin. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, welcome to the Board of Liquor License Commissioners for Baltimore City's AM docket. Today is Thursday, February 11th, 2021. The board will be hearing violations today. I'll quickly go over our PowerPoint presentation <clears throat> regarding these online hearings. The board runs these hearings on the WebEx platform. There is a link shown on this slide that you may click on to join the hearing along with an access code and a password. If you do not have a smartphone, tablet, laptop, or other device, you may use the call-in number uh, <clears throat> and access code to listen to the hearing. All materials that have been submitted to the board and are being considered by the board can be found on our hearing schedules page of our website. The board has a 48-hour evidence rule, which means all evidence should be submitted by Tuesday, February 9th to our ex Assistant Executive Secretary, Stacey Russell. After this preliminary reading, I, the Deputy Executive Secretary, will call the cases. Once the case is called, I will empower all applicants and or their representatives and any other witnesses and ask that their video and audio feeds are turned on so they may be sworn in and provide testimony. At the end of the case, the board will ask if there are any individuals who would like to provide further testimony. If any member of the public wishes to provide testimony, please use the raise your hand function so that I may make you a panelist. At that time, please turn on your video and audio feeds to be sworn in by our court reporter. Lastly, the board is unauthorized to discuss non-case related items. Some basic ground rules, please mute yourself if you are not speaking to minimize any background noise. Please identify yourself and spell your name before speaking. This allows our court reporter to document who is speaking at that time. This event is run live on Charm TV. Individuals use profanity, are disrespectful or are unruly may be expelled from the hearings. When giving testimony, please find a quiet, well-lit space with a good internet connection so that you can be heard clearly. All right. With that, um, those ground rules in place, uh, Mr. Chairman, are you ready to proceed? Yes, let's proceed. Okay. The first case is licensees Thomas W. Hamrick and Yanis Carolina Silva, Carolina Tex-Mex Restaurant LLC, treating as Carolina's Tex-Mex Restaurant, 500 South Wool Street. They are a Class B beer, wine, and liquor license holder. They are charged with two violations of the board's rules dating from October 6, 2020, Rule 4.16, Illegal Conduct, and Rule 3.12, General Welfare, and I believe Mr. Harry Priebus is the uh, counsel representing. <clears throat> is that correct, Mr. Priebus? That is correct. Mr. Bundy, are we doing Rule 4.14, the live entertainment violation? Oh, additionally, uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, my apologies. Uh, license holder is also charged from the same date with violating Rule 4.14, live entertainment violation without a license. Uh, Mr. Pre Mr. Priebus, uh, who needs to be Mr. Silva or Mr. Hamrick? I'm trying to figure out the, the camera right now. Let's see if I can get this. Yeah, I'm. you are now a panelist, so you should be able to. Okay. Start a video. Yeah. There we go. Okay. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Um, with me is uh, uh, Myra Bernal, M A Y B E R N A L, um, and Pedro Silva, P E D R O S I L V A, and um, also uh, Darwin, D A R W I N, Posadas, 
P O S A D A S. Excuse me. It, 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 Did you so identify not. yourself for the record? You're breaking up a little bit. Did you identify yourself for the record? I uh, I believe I did, but in okay. case you didn't hear me, Harry Previs on behalf of the licensees. Okay, and Mr. Previs, are these going to be admissions or denial? This will be a denial. Okay. Um, and so, do we have the inspectors here? Yeah. Uh, Inspector Cindy Tudhope and Inspector uh, Robinson are impaneled as well. Uh, all right. Let me ask the reporter to swear all the witnesses then, please. What, how do I need the reporter? Can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, okay. Ms. You're, you're, Thank you. You're, Need the spelling for the first person, the first witness that you said. Uh, I have uh, Mr. Silva. My, Myra Bernal is that the first witness? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, I just. I actually need my phone unmuted. Oh, okay. So that way I'm not. There you go. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, Mr. Previous, will I be, be able to get the spelling um, of the first person? I just need the spelling of the name. I have Pedro Silva and Darwin Posada. Sure. It's M A Y R A. And then last name is E E R N A L. B as in boy, E R N A L. Yes. Okay, thank you. All right, um, will you all be able to raise your right hand? Yes. Thank you. Uh, do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you are about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you God or under penalty of perjury? And please state your name before your response. <clears throat> yes, I do. Uh, my, my name is Pedro Silva. P E D R O S I L V A. Yes, my name is Darwin Posadas. Yes, my name is Myra Bernal. Okay, great. Thank you. We swear the inspectors. <clears throat> yes, Inspector Tato. Okay, and Mr. Rob. Oh, and uh, Mr. Inspector Robinson. Walter Robinson. I do. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. So, Inspector Tudhope, are you going to provide the testimony? Inspector Robinson is, sir. All right. Thank you. Go ahead, please. Um, so, on October 6, 2020, at approximately 10.30 p.m., I, Inspector Robinson, and Inspector Tudhope responded to a complaint. I'm sorry. Responded to complaint number 20-006. 86651 received for Car Carolina's Tex-Mex located on 500 South Wolf Street. The complaint was received at 10 p.m. Upon arrival, Inspector Tudhope and I sat and observed the establishment for about 10 minutes. The music was determined to be loud and we went inside to the second floor. Once we got upstairs, we noticed a drag show taking place. We then informed the bartender about the noise complaint and went to check the liquor license for live entertainment. The establishment did not have live entertainment on the license. The bartender was informed about this and was advised that the drag show, that drag shows are considered to be live entertainment. We informed the bartender that a violation was going to be written for both the noise and the drag show. The bartender turned off the music and asked the performers to leave. Nothing further to report. Did you say something, Mr. Chairman? I asked if you had questions for the witness. Y yeah, yes, I do. Um, Go ahead. Inspector Robinson, um, at, at what point did you hear the music 
outside the establishment? How far away from the establishment were you when you heard the music? Um, I was parked right across the street. And you could hear the music fr from the inside of your car? Yes. And, and you determined it to be uh, Carolina Tex Max's music, right? Yes. Um, and then you entered the establishment, and went upstairs. Um, where, where was the music playing from? Um, um, I do not recall. Um, I do know that there were speakers, um, but I don't know if there was a. I don't recall if there was a DJ or not. Okay. Um, in in your report, I think it's exhibit exhibit one. There's two pictures. Uh, do you have it? Do you have the report handy? Yes. Yes. Okay. And and then the first picture is is Carolina Tex Mex, the the storefront. Correct. And the, and the second, it, it looks like a picture of the bar. Yes. And, and is that it, it? It's very dark uh, from the liquor board's website. But is that the speaker on the left side of the picture? That's one of the speakers. Okay. And was there another speaker? Um, there's also speakers mounted, uh, I believe, on the on the walls as well. Was was music coming from those speakers? Uh, I don't recall. Okay. And how how loud was the music? Did you have a reading device or anything? Um, I did not have a reading device. Um, but I determined it to be loud based off of me essentially being in my car, no music, when windows rolled up. I can hear the music clearly. Okay, and, and what type of music was playing? Um, I don't recall, sir. Okay, and at, at any point, uh, did you see a DJ or anyone with a microphone? Um, I saw a few drag show performers. Um, I don't recall if there was a DJ or not. Okay. Was there a stage? No. No stage. Um, but there are people in drag dress. Yes. Okay. Um, and and the people in drag dress, how were they performing? Were they performing at all, or were they just walking around in in drag? Um. As um, as far as I saw when we got up there, they were just walking around and drag. Um, yes. Okay. So, so how would you classify this as a drag show then? Um, they were dressed up in drag. It appeared to me that they might have been in between sets, uh, I guess. I've never been to a drag show, so I, I can't... Uh, attest to how that works okay uh, and but but there was no stage or anything you just assume that there was a drag show because they're dressed up in drag correct okay uh no further questions mr chair all right thank you, you want to put on evidence uh yes please um first i'll like call miss myra bernal <laughs> all right oh. Okay, on camera. Ms. Bernal, um, are you an employee of Carolina Tax Max? Yes. Yes. Um, and how, how do you, what do you do for Carolina Tax Max? You're a bartender? Yes. You're a bartender. Um, and were you bartending on the night of October 6th? Yes. Uh, um, what was happening on the night of October 6th? Um, I met with the night with Pedro. Awesome. Um, that's a much heavier, that's not a uh, party. I, I'm sorry, I can't hear you. What's your, I'm going to be the translator. My name is Pedro Silva. And what she's saying is that night it was uh, um, a private party, which is uh, the restaurant, the whole place is shut down. We closed Tuesday and Wednesday, and they, um, Rental for that night was a, a birthday party. It was a private party that night, she says. Yes. 
and Ms. Morale, um, what what type of music was playing? What kind of music was playing? Que música que la música estaba jugando cuando llegaron ellos. Que tan alto? No, que clase de música. Spanish music. Spanish music. Uh, and how were you playing this music? What type of speaker system was it? Que el speaker que tenían usando. ¿Cuál era? Ah. El que sale en el video. The the one they show on the video. The one that's on the countertop. Uh, you're, say, you're, you're saying exhibit two, that, that picture of the speaker there, that was the only speaker player? That's, right. that's the only one, yeah. Okay. And was there a DJ microphone? Anything no, like that no, nothing. It's only the speaker. Bluetooth. Bluetooth speaker. Um, was there any type of show going on? I mean, no. No. Any, no type of performance? No. No. Two people were dressed up. Yeah, only. Okay. And his birthday. It's mine. Okay. And it was only Mr. Posadas who was dressed up and one other person. Yes. Yeah. yes. Okay. Um, Mr. Posadas, can I call Mr. Posadas? Um, yeah. If you want, it's up to you. Okay. Mr. Posadas, um, did you ha did you have the private event that night on October sixth? Yeah. yeah, yes, it's my it's my party, my happy birthday. Yes. And Mr. Posadas, were you dressed up in drag? Yes. Um, and, and who else was dressed up in drag that yeah. night? Is uh, his friend, uh, my friend. Yes, my friend. Que estaba haciendo la función de. ¿Cómo se le dice? What? De presentador. No, no. Ah, yes. Uh -huh. That's it. And were you performing at all? At all? Estaba uh, performando. No lo andaba caminando. Eh, no. Era mi atuendo de cumpleaños. That's it. That's it. Just after the birthday. That's it. We were not performing. And this it was just a private event for your birthday. Private event, yeah. Privado. Privado. Yes. I have no further questions. Mr. Okay. Chair. The right. Questions. Commissioner, do you have any questions? I have no. I have no questions. No questions, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Blundy, is this does this call for public comment or not? A violation. This is the moment where I ask that question, Mr. Chair. Um, if there are any members of the public who wish to provide testimony on this matter, please use the raise your hand function at this time. Mr. Chairman, I do not see any members of the public who wish to testify. Okay, thank you. Uh, anything further, Mr. Priebus? Um, I, I would just state that um, the, the record reflects that this was just a, a patron of the bar dancing. Um, and there's really no evidence that there was any sort of, of performance, um, a, a drag performance um, presented by, by the inspectors. It, it was just two people dressed up in drag um, and there was, there was no, performance seen by the inspector. There was no stage set up. Um, there was no sort of dancing witnessed at that point. Um, and the, the, there was only one speaker um, that was playing music according to, to my witnesses. And um, the inspector noted that he saw that one speaker but he was unable to determine the other speakers and considering how small that speaker is i personally find it hard to believe that you could hear music from the street in his car from that one bluetooth speaker that's small enough to sit um on the bar um and that's all 
Okay, thank you. On the basis then of the change in charging documents, as well as the testimony received, um, I find a violation of Rule 4.16 of legal conduct on October 6, 2020, with respect to the music, uh, the decibel level of it. I find a violation of Rule 3.12 general welfare on October 6, 2020, for the same reason. I would dismiss the violation of Rule 4.14 for lack of sufficient evidence. I'd impose a fine of $150 each on the two violations, and that's primarily because this uh, license does not have a good record. Uh, this is the fifth time they've been in for violations. Um, so I would, that would be a total of $300 fine, and I'd give them 30 days to pay. Commissioner? Commissioner Guy, uh, in consideration of the testimony and the evidence presented to the board this morning, uh, pertaining to this case, I also find uh, them in violation of Rule 4.16, Illegal Conduct, uh, which took place on October the 6th, 2020, and violation of Rule uh, 3.12, General Welfare, which also took place on October the 6th. I concur with the fine of $150 for each offense uh, for violation uh, for the for the uh, proposed violation of Rule 4.14, uh, I would also dismiss for insufficient evidence. Based upon the uh, file before us, the testimony from the inspectors and from the licensee, uh, I too would find a violation of Rule 4.16 on October 6, 2020, based upon the unreasonably loud music that uh, the inspector cited. I also find a violation of Rule 3.12 on October 6, 2020, and would concur with my colleagues on dismissing uh, Rule 4.14, and would also uh, join my colleagues in imposing a $150 fine uh, to each uh, violation with the understanding that these fines uh, might, be, might seem a little lower than I would prefer given the pandemic, but hopefully we will not see this licensee return anytime soon. Thank you, Ms. Thank Russell. You. Yes, I'd like to call exhibits for the record. Exhibit number one, violation report, Inspector Robinson. Uh, exhibit number two, BLLC 311 call inspection report, Inspector Robinson. And exhibit number three, 311 CSR complaint dated 10-620. Thank you. Thank you. Um, commissioners, uh, that concludes the first hearing. Uh, are the uh, commissioners ready to move to the next one? Yes. Get Mr. Fogelman. Mr. Fogelman, are you are you there? I am here. Let me see. And and are are the licensees with you? Okay. Do, do you have your licensees with you, Mr. Fogelman? Yeah. Thank okay. You. I think. Can you see both of us? <laughs> okay. Thank you. Okay, um, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, um, <clears throat> this uh, licensee, this case is uh, dating from December 18th, 2020, and the licensee is David Tobosh Soldi Fossa LLC, trading as the Chasseur at 3326-28 Foster Avenue. Licensee is a class BD7 beer, wine, and liquor license holder, and they are charged with violation of rule 4.16, illegal conduct, and rule 3.12, general welfare. Um, I'm going to now, Inspector Tudhope is in, and there is one additional witness, it looks like. Okay, Mr. Fogelman, will you identify yourself for the record, please? Yes, thank you, Your Honor. Stephen W. Fogelman, on behalf of the applicant, I'm joined by General Manager Brian Eder, E-D-E-R. Okay. And uh, is this going to be admission or denial? A very brief denial. Okay. Uh, can I ask the uh, reporter to swear Mr. Eder as well as Inspector Tuthope if she's going to be testifying? 
Okay, um, Mr. Eater and Inspector Tudhope, uh, please raise your right hands. Thank you. Uh, do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you are about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you God or under the of perjury? I do, Inspector Tuttle. I do. Yeah, I do. The green and Mr. Eater? Uh, yes, yes, I do. Thank you. Uh, Ma'am, there, there are two additional witnesses who did speak, but I don't think you stated their name. Uh, it's police detective L.C. Greenhill and uh, Chief Liquor Inspector Chief uh, Chris Amalis uh, may need to swear in. Okay. Uh, would you both be able to raise your right hand? Okay, I see um, Agent Chris Amalis. I just don't see um, Detective Greenhill. Well, I'm here, but um, yeah, my video's not showing up, so. Okay, okay, well, um, you both can uh, just raise your right hands. Um, do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you are about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you God or under penalty of perjury? I do. Okay. Mr. Chairman? And, um, and uh, Mr. Chris, or Agent uh, Chris Mollis? I do. Okay, Thanks. And Detective Greenhill? I do. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, floor is yours. Um, so, um, who's going to present testimony on behalf of the board? Inspector Tudor, sir. Would you proceed, please? Yes, sir. On December 18th, 2020, at approximately 9.45, the Social Club Task Force that includes members of BPD Vice, Baltimore City Health Department, Baltimore Housing, Baltimore Fire Department, and BLC responded to this chaser located at 3328 Foster Ave. To conduct a joint investigation and to investigate a recent anonymous complaint received to the Baltimore City Liquor Board that the establishment was open and operating on the third floor and allowing customers through the rear entrance located on the third floor up the rear staircase and had covered their windows to make sure that it was hard to see inside and was in violation of Mayor Scott's executive order of no indoor consumption. Upon arrival, I, Inspector Tarop and L.C. Greenhill proceeded up the rear staircase of the establishment to the third floor. Other members of the task force, including Chief Chris Malice and Inspector Jordan, proceeded to the interior of the establishment through the front door and up to the third floor. Upon reaching the third floor, I, Inspector Tarop, looked through the window in the door and observed there to be a large crowd inside. Once inside, observed beer, wine glasses on the bar area, as well as people consuming them. Inspector observed only a few people wearing masks at this time. Inspector Tarop and the task force members made contact with Mr. Brian Dennis, who stated he was the manager and part owner, as well as Mr. David Tobash, the licensee that did not have any form of identification on him. I, Inspector Tarok, and members of the task force informed Mr. Brian Dennis to clear out the establishment. He complied. Inspector Tarok counted 18 patrons leaving the establishment. The task force informed Mr. Dennis of the evaluation and left the establishment without further incidents. Thank you. Mr. Uh, Mr. Fogel, any questions? Yes, thank you very much. Uh, Inspector. Did you determine the identity of any of the other people in the establishment that night, other than Mr. Tobash and Mr. Eater? No, sir. Okay. Um, and any any kind of, or let me ask you this: uh, Would you say that there was paper put up to uh, hide the windows? Do you remember what kind of paper it was? Yes, sir. It was brown paper, and it was um. It's on one of the pictures that I have attached with my. All right. Have you seen the pictures online for this case? No, sir. Okay. Uh, because they're completely illegible. I mean, there's, it, it, I don't know what happened in the, in the translation, but we can't see anything in those photos. Is it possible that there was Christmas gift wrapping paper on the lower part of the windows? 
um, I'm looking at my my sheet right now, and it's um, it's brown paper, and it's covering the first two bottom panels of the three panel window. Right. Right. Okay. Um, thank you very much, Inspector. No further questions. Okay. Did the other um, uh, the this, uh, Agent Chris Amalis or the detective wish to testify? I have nothing further unless they have anything for me, Your Honor. Okay. Detective Greeno. The same for me. Uh, I, I don't know. Uh, I have nothing unless uh, anyone want to ask me questions. All right. Ms. Fogelman, you want to present evidence? Yes. Thank you very much. I'll be brief. Um, I'll, I'll call Mr. Eater. Mr. Eater, um, tell me what was the what what was the event that occurred on December 18th at the bar? It was a uh, Christmas party that my partner was throwing for his employees for his other business for his construction company. All right. Can you hear him well? Yes, we can hear. Him. Okay, great. All right. So it's a Christmas party, um, and was there anything in common about everyone at the event? They were all employees of Mr. Tobash's other business. All right. And um, when was this Christmas party planned? Early November. All right. And were any other events planned during, uh, for Christmas that were shut down or were canceled as a result of the mayor's sudden and abrupt announcement on December 11th? Yeah, we had a wedding and five Christmas parties that we had to cancel that were, were you know, paying guests. All right. And so the purpose of this party um, was to exactly do what? It's celebrate Christmas for Dave to you know, get something back to his, to his employees to his, you know, his, uh, and his contractors. All right. W was everyone served free food? Was everyone served free drinks? Everything was, there was no, uh, the red truck current was just used to track inventory, not for any, uh, you know, no cash. Uh, so you rang zeros all night. On your POS. On the upstairs bar, mm -hmm. correct. The upstairs in your open area. All right. And why were you, um, why was the party held on the third floor? Uh, the general public couldn't, didn't know, didn't know that there was anything going on. No one that we weren't, wasn't invited to the party could come in. It was just for the people that, that, that David had coming, you know, for the party itself. And was a single spouse, girlfriend, boyfriend of, an employee present. Not to my knowledge, I was downstairs running the restaurant the, the entire night. But you recognized every single person I in the room. I recognized everybody. Okay, and um, why did you bring people up the back? For the same reason, so that so the guests that were coming in to pick up carry out didn't think that they could go upstairs and just hang out. All right, thank you. And um, all right, that's that's all I have, Your Honor. I thank you. The commissioners have any questions? No questions. No questions. Okay. No questions. And uh, do you have any uh, members of the public who wish to testify? If there are any members of the public who wish to provide testimony, please use the raise your hand function at this time. Mr. Chairman, I do not see any members of the public who wish to give testimony on this case. Okay, Mr. Fogelman. Yeah, I'll be very brief. Thank you. I want to make it clear, and I, I hope Mr. Eater's testimony was compelling, that they weren't trying to hide from authority. They were trying to hide from the general public so that they would not that they would not be in, in compliance. Um, they all summer we've run around. I've talked about it to my own clients that the you know the governor's order specifically required uh, the general public's prohibition at these kinds of uh, establishments uh this was a christmas party um for employees who'd suffered a tragic year and to the extent that i've been able to determine there was not a single member of the general public on the premises on that date um that that um it's it's tough because you obviously want to help your employees after this tragic year, um, and I it, it it just put these licensees in a bad position. Like you already heard, he canceled seven of them. So um, I don't believe the licensee believed he was being non-compliant that night. I can understand that it would appear to be a furtive attempt to uh, hide 
conduct from authorities. But I think it's equally plausible uh, that they understood that if the general public walks by and sees people drinking downstairs, they're going to want to come in. And then we got big problems. So it, the whole thing was regrettable. Um, and the and, and as you know, the whole thing, to me anyway, was quite sudden when the new mayor announced the lockdown uh, 24 hours after taking office. Uh, so the, given the confusion um, and given the fact that, that the inspectors, you know, didn't say who works here, you know, that kind of thing, um, I, I would ask that you consider dismissing the violation. Thank you. Okay, thank you. On the basis then of the materials contained in the charging document, including including the mayor's executive order of December 11, um, and the testimony received, um, do you think that uh, there was a violation of Rule 4.16 on December 18 because the gathering, whether public or private, exceeded the 10-person limit that was contained in the executive order? Um, and I would find a violation of Rule 3.12. Uh, on December 18, 2020, for the same reason. I'm uh, sympathetic. This licensee has a good record. They have not had prior violations. I think the explanation uh, makes one sympathetic, although it's not entirely sufficient. But I would impose a minimal fine of $50 as to each violation, and I would give them 30 days to pay. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Your Honor. <laughs> Commissioner Guy. Uh, in consideration of the testimony and evidence presented to the board in this case, I would also find that uh, there was a violation of Rule 4.16, illegal conduct, that took place on December the 18th, 2020, and a violation of Rule uh, 3.12, general welfare, uh, which also took place on December the 18th, 2020. I would concur with the fine of fifty dollars each uh, for each offense. Thank you, Commissioner. Based upon the charging document and the testimony uh, before us, I too would find a violation of Rule Four Point One Six, illegal conduct, on December eighteenth, twenty twenty, and am sympathetic. Uh, appreciate uh, the licensee's efforts to uh, uh, help his employees. Although maybe next time in the pandemic we give gift cards instead, perhaps, but uh, we concur with the imposition of a $50 fine and also find a violation of Rule 3.12 on December 18, 2020, and we concur with the imposition of a $50 fine. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Russell. Mike call Zippus for the record. Violation report, Inspector Tuthole. Um, I'm sorry, exhibit number two, Maryland Executive, Mayor's Executive Order dated 12-11-20. And licensees will receive a penalty assessment notice in the mail. And that concludes the hearing on the case number two. Mr. Chair, are you prepared to move to the next one? I am. <sighs> Mr. Chairman, this, um, this case involves license holder Jackson Munoz and Marilyn Munoz, El Ricon Trocoleño, LLC, trading as El Ricon Trocoleño, uh, 422-26 South Macon Street. Licensee is a Class B beer, wine, and liquor license holder. And there are 13 uh, violations alleged over five separate dates, um, as discussed in the pre-hearing um, the, if the board will in, indulge, we will uh, deal with these um, violations by date so as to not confuse. With that said, if the, the board will grant me a, a minute to add everyone so that we can swear every one of the inspectors in because it's different inspectors on different dates so that we can uh, be as efficient as possible, I will do that right now. Uh, are they represented by council? Mr. Bundy. Oh, yes. Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, my understanding is that uh, Pete Priebus is the counsel for this licensee. Mr. Priebus, is that correct? Yes. Can you hear me or see me? I um, can hear you, Mr. Priebus. Do you want to identify yourself for the record, please? Here I go. Peter Priebus, on behalf of the licensees, Jackson Munoz and Marilyn Munoz, they present with me. Uh, Jackson Munoz is present. Uh, he also has a witness, Mr. Harold Green, G-R-E-E-N. All right. 
So, um, Mr. Blendy, you'll have to get them in as well. I think they're in, so we'll get the inspectors in and then everyone can be sworn. Thank you. Yep, that, that is what I'm doing, Mr. Chairman. And in the meantime, um, Mr. Previs, can you hear me? Yes. Oh, okay. Um, in the meantime, would I be able to um, get the spelling? I have a Jackson Munoz and then uh, the spelling for the witness that is with you. Harold, H-A-R-O-L-D, Green, okay. G-R-E-E-N. Great, thank you. Okay. Um, for the court reporters, um, these, uh, the following agents are listed. Um, Agents Perez, Agent Chase, Agent Clark, Inspector Robinson, Inspector Jordan, Inspector Tudhope, Agent Han, and Chief Chris Mollis to the various states. I believe they are all in, and uh, if all members are in, it could be time to swear them. Uh, if you okay. would, Madam Reporter. Okay, um, I'm going to swear everyone at once, and then when it comes to um, Saying, saying I do, just say your name before um, before the I do, since there's multiple people on the line. Um, please raise your right hand. Thank you. you do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you are about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you God or under penalty of perjury? And uh, please state your name before your response. <laughs> Um, five, five, and what else? One, one, one. I'll the number five. Oh, I'm not hearing um, responses. I guess I can just go down just the say. list. Um, Mr. Munoz, uh, uh, would you be able to say your response? No. Okay. That's um, you. Mr. Thank, thank you. Um, and um, Ms. Munoz, can you say your response? Or, I'm um, sorry, uh, Harold Green? I do. Um, Inspector Chase? I do. Okay. Um, Agent Clark? I do. You, um, Agent Perez? I do. Okay. Agent Robinson? Inspector Robinson, I do. Inspector, sorry. Um, Inspector Tudhope? I do. Um, Agent Kusamala? Um, Agent Kusamala? I think you're on mute. You're on mute, Mr. Chris Mullins. I do. It's saying on mute. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. yeah thank you. I do. Okay. And um, I think there were two more inspectors. Um, if you can just say your name before your response. I think it's um, Han, and I think there was one more. Yeah. Stephen Han. In I do. Okay, and uh, Inspector Jordan? Yeah. Oh, you're on mute. Ms. Inspector Jordan, I do. Thank you. Okay, do we have everyone then? I believe so. I think so. All right, so we're going to do this seriatim. Violations that are alleged of August 15, 2020. I don't know whether all that feedback from can people mute themselves, please. Um, the uh, this is a rule 4.16 and a rule 3.12 violation of these admissions or denial. Mr. Chairman, may I ask a procedural question? Sure. Since we're going seriatim date by date, do I have the discretion to admit certain dates and deny other dates? Certainly. Thank you. I will I will deny the 4.16 and 3.12 charges for August 15, 2020. That will not be the case with some of the other cases. Okay. Uh, who's going to present the test? Okay. 
you know, on August 15th. I will, Chairman. Please proceed. On August 15, 2020, at approximately 11.15 p.m., 311 complaints 20-0054-6854 and 20-0054-6853 were received by this agency. At approximately 11.30 p.m., I, Agent Perez, Agent Clark, Agent Chase, and Inspector Robinson, responded to the establishment and found the complaint to be valid. Front door was open and loud music could be heard emanating from the establishment from several feet away. In addition to loud music, several other violations were observed. A tent was set up with chairs and tables placed on the court directly in front of the establishment, as noted on violation issue on August 10th, 2020. Tables were being used for alcoholic beverage service without the required license extension. Tables weren't at least six feet apart, and some tables were observed to have parties of over six individuals. Upon inspecting the interior of the establishment, I also observed approximately three individuals seated at the bar consuming alcoholic beverage in violation of mayor's order dated 8-7-2020, prohibiting indoor dining service past 10 p.m. The licensee was informed of these violations and the BLLC staff departed the location without any further incidents. Mr. Previs. Thank you. Inspector Perez, uh, so just so I'm clear, the, the, the effective uh, mayor's executive order at this point was the August 7, 2020, and to paraphrase that, that required 20, 5% capacity inside and a closing time of 10 o'clock. That's correct, sir. All right, but but the out, outside service could continue past 10 o'clock under that under that order. I do not recall under that order, um, but um, in this particular case, uh, they didn't have the proper permits, which was uh, heard on a violation issued on 8-10-2020. Okay, before we get to the issue or not of a permit or non-permit on the outside, I just want to make sure that we're talking apples and apples with, with regard to the, the effective executive order. So, okay. um, without getting into the issue of the permit, w w was outside service allowed past 10 p.m.? I do not recall. Okay. Um, you, when you arrived, you heard music coming from the inside or the outside of the establishment? Uh, from the inside, the door was open. Okay, so there, there were no speakers outside? No. Okay, and you, you said that was the door permanently open or as people walked in and out? Permanently open. Okay, and, and you could hear the music from where? From the corner of uh, Eastern and Macon. Okay, and that's that's a commercial area there on Eastern Avenue? Yes, sir. Okay. And you could hear the music. Was it louder than the traffic? Yes, sir. Uh, can you describe how so? I could hear music while inside my car with the windows rolled up. Was it hurting your Loud ears at that point? Cars. What was that? I'm sorry. Louder than you, cars. You said you could hear louder than cars. Okay. Yes. And and when you had when you had your windows rolled up, how what was the was the music hurting your ears? No, sir. Okay. All right. And as you got out of your vehicle and you entered the the entrance to the premises, you could hear the music. Yes. Okay. All right. Now, with regard to the outdoor service, do you recall in a prior hearing the licensee having an issue with the there being a glitch on the end of as far as the TMP permit and receiving an email from Inspector McGinnis indicating that he could they could continue to operate 
uh, without the permit and they would notify the liquor board? I recall that. You do? Yes. Okay. All right. So because of the glitch in the permit section, they were never able to get that TMP permit issue and therefore could never get a technical permit or letter from the liquor board with regard to the out, outdoor area. Is that correct? The liquor board um, didn't have any notification of that issue at the time of the violation. You, you never got notified by Mr. McGinnis, Inspector McGinnis? No, sir. No, sir. The, are you speaking on behalf of yourself or the entire liquor board? On behalf of myself. Okay. All right. Now, with regard to uh, the tables being less than six feet apart, is that in the executive order? It was part of the guidance issue for that executive order. And where is that guidance? Posted online on the VLC uh, website. You have it? I can certainly get it. Well, you don't have to do that. You're saying it wasn't a governor's executive order. It wasn't a health department executive order. It wasn't a, a, a mayor's executive order. I do not recall. It, if, I, if I may, Mr. Chairman, I believe that is reflected in the governor's executive order um, from, that was in force at the time. But. Well, my, my question, Inspector, is, is it that the that people have to be six feet apart or the tables have to be six feet apart? Person to person, six feet apart. Okay, so if, if there were a whole pile of empty tables that were piled up next to each other, that wouldn't cause a violation of the executive order. Is that correct? No. Okay. All right, and you indicated that you personally observed more than six people at a table outside? Yes. Okay, and how many tables was that? We did the were about 12 tables. And they were all occupied? All of them. And they all had more than six people? Not not all have more than six people. About four or five have more than six people. Okay. And how many people were at those four or five? Between six and eight patrons. Okay. And, and um, do you know whether they were family members? I do not. Okay. Um, I have no further questions. Thank you, sir. Are you, pre are you going to present evidence? Briefly, Your Honor, for Mr. Okay. Chairman. I, I call Mr. Jackson Munoz. Okay. Mr. Munoz, you were sworn previously. You raised your right hand, said you tell the whole truth, right? Yes. Okay. Can you hear Mr. Munoz, Mr. Chairman? Yes. Yeah. Okay, great. All right. Uh, you and your daughter, Marilyn Munoz, who was a co-licensee, yeah. you, you attempted to apply for the TMP permit with the permit permit section. Is that correct? Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. You got to keep your voice up. Yeah. And 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 you, you received a, a text or your daughter received a text from Inspector McGinnis indicating that there were technical problems on their end. Is that correct? And they indicated that they would allow you to operate and they would notify the liquor board. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Now, with regard to uh, Inspector Perez testified there were three people yes. inside the premises. Yes. Mr. Previous, can you tell us the date? The date? Yes. Of, of, the, uh, the, of the, the text? Of the email that he got or text. Uh, yeah. August 10, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Thank you. Should I read it to? Well, it, you, would, you, would you? Well, I guess so. I mean, it has to come into evidence at some point. Okay. Um, and this is the text that you guys received. Is that right? Yeah. All right. And it indicates the permit manager, Peggy White, will not be back in the office until tomorrow. I have not heard back from anyone regarding your permit application. I spoke to my assistant commissioner who said we are giving leeway because of the delay in issuing permits. 
She advised we are allowing the outdoor seating to proceed pending issuance of the permit. I have forwarded her message to Vice and to the Liquor Board. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Now, with regard to inside, under this August 7 executive order of the mayor, everything's supposed to stop at 10 o'clock. Did you understand that? Get yes, your sir. voice up. All right. So, 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 Inspector Perez is indicating that three people were at the bar drinking. Did, were, did you observe that? Uh, people was uh, pay. Pay. Yeah. Okay. And they came up to pay. Yeah, they come up to the bar to pay. Were they drinking? For the beer, yeah, they pay. Were they drinking? Yeah. No, they were not drinking. Okay. And did you have problems with patrons not understanding what the rules were? No. Yeah, yeah. And did you try to get them to, to to cooperate at that point? Yes, sir. And did you understand that the, 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 the server was supposed to deliver the bill and collect the money at the table? Yes. Okay. Thank you. I have no further questions, Mr. Chairman. Any other evidence? Any other evidence? Not on this issue, Your Honor. Okay. Um, commissioners have questions? I have no questions. No question, Mr. Chairman. Any from the public? <clears throat> if there are any members of the public who wish to provide testimony, please use the raise your hand function at this time. Mr. Chairman, I do not see any members of the public who wish to testify at this time. All right, thank you. On the basis then of the materials contained in the charging document and the testimony received, I find a violation of Rule 4.16, illegal conduct on August 15, 2020, based on the loud music. Um, the um, I don't know so much about the permit issue, uh, but there, uh, uh, Agent Perez's testimony about the outdoor seating arrangements and the individuals who were drinking. And I would also find a violation of 3.12 general welfare on August 15, 2020, for the same reasons. Um, I'm going to uh reserve on any sanction based on uh, how the rest of this case goes commissioners commissioner guy uh, i would also find a uh, violation of rule uh, 4.16 illegal conduct uh, that took place on august the 15th and the violation of rule 3.12 general welfare which uh, took place also on august the 16th and I will also hold off as far as uh, uh, penalties until we finish uh, the rest of the case. Uh, Commissioner uh, Guy, I believe it was August 15th, not 16th. I'm sorry, I, I thought I said August the 15th. I think it's 16, but that's okay. Right. Okay. Um, I yeah, I uh, join my colleagues. I find a violation of Rule 4.16 legal conduct uh, August on August 15, 2020, based upon the charging documents and the testimony and loud music and the fact that it seems even if this licensee had their uh, TMP, they still may have been in violation here. The loud music in and of itself, I think, constitutes the illegal conduct. And then I also find a violation of Rule 3.12 general welfare on August 15, 2020, and we'll withhold uh, any sanction until the end of the case. Uh, okay. Mr. Chairman, the uh, the next date um, that is alleged violations is three violations of the rules on September 4th, 2020, and they are violations of Rule 4.16, illegal conduct, violation of Rule 3.12, general welfare, and violation of Rule 4.14a, live entertainment. Ms. Previous, are these going to be admissions or denials? Mr. Chairman, with regard to this date and the other dates, there will be an admission with regard to any charges for 4.16 illegal conduct and 3.12 general welfare and a denial of 4.14A live entertainment. Okay. Let me just get this down. And... You're saying that as to all the ensuing dates? Yes, Mr. Chairman. I have September 420. There's a 4.16, a 3.12, and a 4.14A. Mm -hmm. 
September 4, I'm sorry. I'm, if I said that wrong. October yes, yes, 14. Right. October 14, we have a 4.16 and a 3.12 and a 4.14A. October 17, we have a 4.16 and a 3.12 and no live entertainment violation. And October 22nd, we have a 4.16, a 3.12 and a 4.14A. Okay, I understood. So, uh, Mr. Okay. need to uh, give explanations on the uh, first two, but let's go to the live entertainment issue on September 4. Who would testify about that for the board? Agent Clark or Inspector Jordan, or either of you testify? Inspector Jordan here. Please proceed. Okay, on September 4th uh, at approximately 12.30 a.m., which would make it September 5th, I apologize, Inspector Jordan, along with Agent Clark, arrived at the establishment known as El Rincón, located at 422 -26 Macon Street, in response to a 311 liquor license complaint. And the complaint number for that is 20 uh, The service request for uh, a complaint of disturbing the peace, noise, loud music, and the front door being open. Uh, as we approached the establishment, we could hear loud music coming from the establishment. Upon entering the establishment, we discovered several staff members and patrons not wearing masks, masks protective, protective masks. The establishment was overcrowded and patrons were dancing, which violates the restriction of their Class B license. We spoke to Mr. Jackson Munoz regarding the 311 uh, complaint and the violations. Mr. Munoz, who was not wearing a mask, stated that the patrons just want to dance. Mr. Munoz was issued a violation and was directed to make the appropriate changes prior to our departure. Thank you. Ms. Preach, do you have questions? I have no questions. Now, Mr. Priebus, do you have any questions for Inspector Jordan? Did we lose him? My phone. Oh, I'm sorry. Are you there, Mr. Priebus? My apologies. I, I muted to not give background noise and forgot to unmute. Apologize. Do you have questions for the uh, inspector? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Go ahead. Inspector, I'm only interested in my questioning with regard to live entertainment. What type of live entertainment did you observe? Well, there was a DJ in the corner of the establishment and the uh, patrons were dancing as pictured on my report. Okay, so you, your, your complaint in the charge indicates that patrons were dancing? Yes. Is that the basis of your, your your indication that there's live entertainment going on? Uh, the music that was playing coming from the DJ located in the corner behind the, uh, I believe there's a pool table uh, and the patrons dancing. And the- Okay, the I'm looking. My apologies. Oh, and the uh, fact that the establishment is a, has a B license, which is the restaurant license. Okay, I, I'm looking at the violation uh, as charged uh, here today, violation of Rule 4.14A, Live Entertainment, September 4, 2020. Uh, the, the, the violation uh, states everything that's stated in the other two violations, but with regard to what I can um, glean of regarding live entertainment, you said that the patrons were dancing. This establishment does not have live entertainment privileges attack, attached to their license. Uh, and Mr. Munoz indicating the patrons just want to dance. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Okay. There's nothing here about a DJ? Uh, no, that's just an observation that I'm, uh, you know, that when you questioned me that I was just elaborating on. Okay. 
Thank you. I have no further questions. Okay. Um, the committee have any questions? I have no questions. Uh, Inspector Jordan, isn't it isn't it true that in the Rule 4.1 for live entertainment, that live entertainment also includes dancing? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Um, may, I, may I be heard on the legal point, Mr. Chairman? Uh, yeah, you could be heard. Actually, I want to hear from you on all three violations, so go ahead. Okay. We, we admitted 3.12. Yeah, I didn't know if you wanted to give it. I, I do. I, I'll, I'll go to mitigation. Um, with your permission, I would like to argue the legal point with regard to the live entertainment. Go ahead. Thank you. In the case of Rojas versus Board of Liquor License Commissioners for Baltimore City, 230 Maryland App 472, 2016, uh, the establishment raised the issue of whether patron dancing met the definition of live entertainment under the city zoning rules and also the city liquor board rules and the court indicated um, in roman 2 illegal conduct next appellants contend that the liquor board erred in finding that they violated liquor board rule 4.18 because now 4.16 because there was no evidence that the patrons were engaged in any type of live entertainment. In a footnote at the end of its brief, the liquor board, quote, concedes that it erred in finding that appellants violated rule 4.18 by allowing live entertainment, unquote. According to the liquor board, for purposes of rule 4.18, patron dancing is not within the definition of live entertainment uh, city zoning code 1-153.2-194.2-14309B12. Thus, we reverse the circuit court's judgment upholding the liquor board's finding that a rule 4.18 violation occurred. The distinction, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, is that patron dancing is not included in the definition of live entertainment, which indicates dance, but means dancing by performers for the purposes of the entertaining public. That decision dealt with uh, rule 4.18, and now we're dealing with rule 4.14a. Mr. Bundy, is there any distinction between the rules? What's the current rule say? I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman, is there a distinction between the old former rule and the current rule? Well, what does the current rule say about dancing? Uh, four point uh, one four a live live entertainment includes as defined under the zoning code um, any any one or more of the items performed by live by one or more persons whether or not done for compensation and whether or not done for compensation and whether or not admission is charged and that is a musical act a musical karaoke, a theatrical act, including stand-up comedy, a play, a review, dance, magic act, disc jockey, or similar activity. So uh, the, the zoning code uh, does specifically refer to dance um, and the live entertainment rule, uh, my, my understanding is the current rule 4.14a was adopted subsequent to that uh, court case that Mr. Priebus is citing. Um, as that was in the 2016 effective date rule. Mr. Previous, what year was that court case? 2006. 2016, the decision was uh, October 26, 16, regarding uh, an incident that obviously occurred much earlier than that. Right. Um, so, in all, in all likelihood, that would have been a previous iteration of the rules, Mr. Mr. Chairman. That the yes. What strikes me about Mr. Prius's argument is that the way you read the rule, it sounds to me as though it was intended to prohibit dancing by performers, not by customers. Um, I don't know how, how do the other commissioners feel about this. Is 
uh, as far as the patrons dancing, do they have is is there a dance floor uh, located there? There, um, as an evidence, Commissioner like, Guy, there's, there's no yeah, there's no evidence. M Mr. Chairman, may I um, clarify or respond to the the last arguments? Uh, under the old rule, under the old rules, there was no. 4.14 live entertainment without authorization. That was something that was put in under the new rules uh, that was specific uh, to the situation. Prior to that, it was charged under the catch-all illegal conduct. Um, the Under the prior charging as a catch-all, it, it indicated that someone did not have authority to have live entertainment uh, by reason of uh, not having it under zoning or under the use and occupancy permit. It's the identical argument that I made in the Rojas case, and it still stands even in the face of there being a more specific rule at this point. I was asked, did the other commissioner disagree with me to apply to performers rather than patients? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I don't read it as just applying to performers, and, and the reason why is because it clarifies, for instance, and if you've ever heard me do karaoke, I'm certainly not a performer, but the, um, the rule contemplates karaoke, um, theatrical acts, including stand-up comedy, which could be performance, plays, magic acts, disc jockey. So I understand your point, but it has dancing in there, and there's no qualification. Um, so I, I, I take your point, but I, um, okay. and I understand Mr. Priebus's, uh reference, the Rojas case. Okay, Commissioner Guy, where are you on this? I'm, I'm, a, I'm a little unclear as far as, this, is this a dance area? Uh, are we talking about patrons uh, dancing anywhere with, with, with within the confines of this? Or, or are the patrons moving to a certain area to dance? Can someone clarify that for me? I don't know if the inspector, uh, did you start? I can describe the uh, area if. Okay. The, so there is a, uh, rest, there's tables for dining and in the evening or when we find people dancing it, it they move the tables out of the way that they use typically for dining so that they can dance in the middle of the uh, establishment as far as I can recall if anybody wants to um, cooperate yes this is agent Clark uh, uh, disco lights are then in the establishment as well. Um, and they move, as Inspector Jordan said, they move the tables from the front of the establishment and they use that as a designated dance floor in the front of the establishment. Okay. So, so, so there, there's essentially a designated dance area. Yes. Huh. I'm sorry. What was that? Said, okay. Yeah. okay. I have no other questions. All right. Um, Mr. Peters, you want to be heard on the other uh, violation? Yes, I'd like to uh, call Mr. Green and Mr. Munoz uh, in mitigation, Mr. Chairman. Well, can you proffer? I mean, you are, they're admitting. Why don't they, can I, 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 I can absolutely proffer if that would help things along. Mr. Chairman, as you know, I've represented Mr. Munoz for quite some time now. Um, he is experiencing some very um, significant personal issues in his life in his life right now. Um, he is undergoing a fairly acrimonious divorce and a separation from his children. Um, it's that on top of COVID and and a loss of income and figuring out how to pay the rent and everything else has compounded things to the point where 
when I was last with him at our last hearing, I noticed that he was definitely not himself. And I spoke to his daughter regarding um, him seeking counseling. Um, I have Mr. Green here. Mr. Green is, has a company called Halal Protective Services. And in October, he was retained by Mr. Munoz to assist with the premises in that Mr. Munoz uh, is uh, suffering from a bout of depression and um, has not been himself. Uh, I understand that there have been prior events, but it seems like these events are the consequence of his personal life having been unraveling on him. Um, again, this is all happening in the middle of COVID and trying to figure out how to feed the family that he is um, estranged from. So with all that in mind, Mr. Chairman, I ask you that to take consideration of what he's going through and that what he's going through has been compounded by the, the situation that we're all in uh, and to act accordingly without uh, the uh, nuclear option. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Do we have any public uh, testimony? Uh, Mr. Chairman, may, may I ask uh, just a point of clarification? Uh, my understanding is Mr. Previs um, is denying the 414A charge on uh, September 4, on October 14, and on November 22. And um, we have only heard um, from the board inspectors as to yeah. September 4th. For the record, do you want to hear the testimony for the other two dates? From, yet. Okay. Uh, let's keep going. Yep. Okay. So, uh, then I will ask, is there any member of the public who wishes to speak to this uh, specific incident on uh, September 4th, 2020 with regard to this license holder? If so, please use the raise your hand feature. Mr. Chairman, I do not see any member of the public raising their hand. Okay. And can the, uh, is, is it, are we permitted to amend the charging document to put the proper date in at this point? Uh, yeah, if, if you would like to note for the record that the appropriate date, uh, based on the testimony from our inspector, since it was after midnight, is actually a charge on September 5th, 2020. Yes, is that permissible? Yeah, it's, it's noted for the record, Mr. Chairman, yes. Okay. Uh, all right, then, on the basis of the materials contained in the charging document, the admissions of the first two violations um, um, and the testimony received, I would find a violation of Rule 4.16 illegal on September 5, 2020, and a violation of Rule 3.12 general welfare on September 5, 2020. Uh, in my view, uh, I would not find a violation of Rule 4.14A. I don't read the rule the way colleagues do. Um, and I reserve on the sanction. Commissioner? Commissioner? I would, uh, I would also, based, based on the information and the testimony that's be, been given uh, on this case, I would find that violation of Rule 4.16, illegal conduct, on September the 5th, uh, violation of Rule 312, general welfare, which took place on September the 5th. Uh, I would find violations on those two. I would dis dismiss the violation of Rule 4.14A, live entertainment, that also took place on September the 5th. I, uh... I find a violation of Rule 4.16, illegal conduct on September 4th, September 5th, excuse me, 2020, based upon charging documents and the testimony. I also find a violation of Rule 3.12, general welfare on September 5th, 2020. And I'm going to respectfully disagree with my colleagues. I do believe there's a violation of Rule 4.14A, live entertainment on September 5th, 2020. I think the fact that they made room for a dancing floor suggests to me that it's beyond just one or two patrons getting up from the chair and dancing. Okay. Ms. Russell? Can I close this for the record? 
Court Exhibit 1, violation report, Inspector Perez. Court Exhibit 2, 311 CSR complaint dated 8-15-20. Um, exhibit number 3, 311 CSR complaint dated 8-15-20. 4, violation report, Inspector Jordan. 5, 311 CSR complaint dated 10-3-20. 6, violation report, Agent Clark. 7, 311 CSR complaint dated 10-14-20. 8, violation report, Inspector Tudhope. 9, 311 CSR complaint dated 10-17-19. Um, 11, violation report, Chief Chris Amalis. 12, Mayor Executive Order dated 9-8-20. 13, Mayor Executive Order dated 8-7-20. And 14, Mayor Executive Order dated 11-12-20. Uh, Mr. Priebus, that leaves us with uh, three additional dates with violations. And if I understood your comment earlier, uh, your client is going to admit the rule 4.16 and 3.12 violations of those dates and deny the 4.14 violation on two of those three dates. Is that correct? That's correct, Mr. Chairman. And for the purposes of um, expediency, I I would agree to a stipulation with regard to the dancing dance floor, and it would leave the same argument. And um, I have no objection to the, the exhibits already being in, and it's the same mitigation. Okay. Um, and so you have nothing further to add on any of these other violations? No, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Uh, with, um, commissioners. Uh, I'm inclined to go ahead with ruling unless you have other comments. I have no further comments. No additional comments. Mr. Blendy, do we have public comment? If there is any member of the public who wishes to provide testimony, please use the raise your hand feature at this time. Mr. Chairman, I do not see any uh, members of the public raising their hand. Thank you then. Uh, with respect to the October 14, 2020, charges uh, on the basis of the materials contained in the charging documents and the admission uh, by the licensee i find a violation of rule 4.16 illegal conduct on october 14 2020 and a violation of rule 312 general welfare on october 14 2020 and based on my prior ruling i would again uh, dismiss the rule 4.14 a live entertainment charge uh, as to the october 17 violation so the material containing the charging document, the licensee's admission, I would find a violation of Rule 4.16, illegal conduct on October 17, a violation of Rule 3.12, general welfare on October 17, um, and then with respect to the November 22, 2020 charges, I would again, on the basis of the materials containing the charging documents and the uh, licensee's admission. Find a violation of Rule 4.16, illegal conduct on November 22, 2020. A violation of Rule 3.12, general welfare on November 22, 2020. I would uh, dismiss the Rule 4.14a, live entertainment charge on November 22, uh, 2020. Commissioners? Commissioner, Commissioner Guy. I would, uh, based on the testimony uh, that, that was given and the evidence presented before the board this morning, I would also find uh, the establishment to be in violation of Rule 4.16 illegal conduct uh, that took place on October the 14th, uh, 2020, a uh, violation of Rule 3.12 general welfare. Which also took place on October the 14th, 2020. I find them in violation. I, again, I would dismiss the violation of Rule 4.14a, live entertainment, which also took place on October the 14th, 2020. And as far as uh, I would also uh, find violation of Rule 4.16, illegal conduct, on October the 17th, 2020, violation of Rule 3.12. General Welfare, October the 17th, 2020. Uh, find violation of Rule 4.16, illegal conduct, which took place on November the 22nd, 2020. In violation of Rule 3.12, General Welfare, uh, November the 20, 22nd, 2020. 
And again, I would dismiss the uh, violation of Rule 4.14a, live entertainment of November uh, 22nd, 2020. Conduct on October 14, 2020. I find a violation of Rule 3.12 General Welfare on October 14, 2020, based upon the admission. Uh, I respectfully uh, find a violation of Rule 4.14A Live Entertainment on October 14, 2020, and would note that at that time, the licensee noted, noted that he tried to stop patrons from dancing, suggesting he knew it wasn't the right thing to be doing. Uh, I find a violation, of, uh, based upon the materials in the charging documents, I also find a violation of Rule 4.16 Illegal Conduct on October 17, 2020. I find a violation of Rule 3.12 General Welfare on October 17, 2020, based upon the admission. Also based upon the admission of violation of Rule 4.16 Illegal Conduct, November 22, 2020, I find a violation. I find a violation of Rule 3.12 General Welfare on November 22, 2020. And again, find a violation of Rule 4.14A Live Entertainment on November 22nd, 2020. Thank you. Um, the, uh, do we, uh, Ms. Russell, we have exhibits here. They've all been called. Okay, thank you. Mr. Previs, uh, before we go to uh, sanction, do you want to be heard further? No, Mr. Chairman. The, the only thing I didn't mention earlier is that uh, his daughter, Marilyn, who is a co-licensee, she has a full-time job, but she is um, a very loving, caring daughter and um, is quite concerned about her father. It, it's not like he's being left alone um, and that this place is run amok. It's, it's being handled and uh, most respectfully that the board take everything into consideration. Thank you. Okay. Um, so, uh, Mr. Previs, the this license was transferred to Mr. Munez in May of 2017, and within a year, he picked up his first violations, uh, and then that year, he picked up three further, two further violations. The following year, there was a protest of renewal because of that, and we renewed his license. But in 2020, he was before the board two more times uh, on general welfare, illegal conduct violations, as well as live entertainment violations. And today he appeared with a long series of violations um, before the board. And I don't know why this board exists other than to um, ensure that um, establishments that serve liquor in Baltimore City do so in an appropriate fashion and pursuant to our rules. And this licensee, although I'm sympathetic to his personal circumstances, is unable to comply with our rules and requirements. And that's pretty obvious from his record. So I'm afraid that I would vote to revoke the license at this point. Commissioners? Commissioner Guy, I would concur with that finding. So I too, unfortunately, would you know, for Mr. Uh, Nunez, agree with my colleagues. I I am sensitive to what's going on in his personal life and the pandemic, but this is a record unlike anything I recall ever seeing on the during my time on this board. Uh, it demonstrates to me that Mr. Nunez has basically disregarded our rules and is just not in a position to uh, be a responsible licensee. So I too would vote to revoke the license. Licensee will receive a penalty assessment notice in, in the mail with further instructions. Um, Mr. Chairman, that concludes the third hearing on the docket. Are you board ready to proceed to the fourth? Yes. Uh, I believe this, uh, the fourth case before the board is uh, licensee Hector Camilo, uh, Nitro LLC, trading as Aqua 3537 East Fairmont Avenue. Licensee holds a class BD7 beer, wine, and liquor license. And I believe Mr. Fogelman is counsel. Is that correct, Mr. Fogelman? Uh, yes, it is. Is my video on? Uh, 
Okay, yeah. Can you turn my video on, someone? That would be on your end, uh, I believe, Mr. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, that's not letting me. Okay, okay. One more second. Okay. Okay, thank you. You, you all can see me now? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay, thanks very much. Uh, Your Honor, Stephen W. Fogelman on behalf of 3537 Fairmount. This is actually a postponement request I indicated to Mr. Blendy um, earlier this morning. And what's the basis? Um, Your Honor, the basis is that, as you can see from some of the allegations and the charges, that we have to count numbers. We have to count uh, who, who was a customer, who was a bartender. Uh, for the overcapacity allegation, and um, uh, the uh, licensee, um, uh, inspect, I'm sorry, Hector Camilo, is a former Baltimore City police officer. He's got a good security system, but it's uh, complicated to pull the video into a usable file format. Um, he was able to get some tech help and get that video downloaded to a wave file or a mov file but unfortunately he wasn't able to get it done until yesterday and he sent it over to miss russell at the board and it was outside of the board's 48 hours um so i would ask that you we have the video we have the still images to uh, argue our point and of course the board wants the best evidence the only way we'd be able to produce that evidence today to you is to basically use a camera to look at another video screen and when we tried it yesterday at my office uh the video quality was horrendous so in order for the board to have the best evidence i'd ask this case has not been in before i'd ask that you postpone the matter so that we can indeed comply with the 48 hour evidence rule thank you mr blendy, mr blendy can we get it into our next docket uh yes i've been mr chairman i've been uh, advised that march 4th it could be added into that docket if the board wished to do so uh, is that okay with you, Mr. Fogelman? That's my birthday, so thank you for the present. <laughs> all right, all right. The case will be continued then March 4. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Commissioners. Thank you, Mr. Blady. Have a great day. Uh, Mr. Chairman, point of clarity um, regarding the prior case. Did the board intend to uh, have the revocation take place immediately, or was there a different date certain? Uh, immediately. Thank you. <clears throat> then, Mr. Chairman and Commissioners, we are on the fifth and final case of today's docket. Um, the licensee is uh, George Dibble, William Matriciani, and Donna Matriciani, uh, Wydog LLC, trading as Playbook. The property address at 6700 German Hill Road, 21222. And the licensee is a class BD7 beer, wine, and liquor, liquor license holder. And they are charged with three violation of three of the rules uh, dating from August 5th, 2020. Rules 4.16, illegal conduct. Rule 3.12, general welfare. And rule 4.14A, live entertainment. And uh, I believe, Commissioner Greenfield, you are going to chair this case and judge for the record. Yeah, just for the record, uh, because of my relationship with the licensees, I'm going to recuse myself from this hearing, and I'm going to be leaving the hearing. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Greenfield, for taking over. My pleasure. Okay, let's uh, proceed. Um, we've called the case, right, Mr. Blundy? Yes, sir. And I believe uh, counsel is Mr. Priebus. Great. That's correct. Hello, Mr. Priebus. Well, let's... Uh, uh, Will this, will, this be, <laughs> uh, will this be an admission or a denial? <laughs> a denial. Okay. I'd expect okay. nothing less. Then um, inspectors who need to be testifying are Agent Daryl Clark and Inspector Rosalba Jordan. And whoever Mr. Priebus wishes to be sworn. All right. Let's get him sworn in. Mr. Chairman, to, to my left is Mr. Carlos C. Can you hear me? Uh, you cut out, Mr. Priebus. Was the last name the same name, Mr. Bulmes? 
Yes, Carlos Bulnes, B-U-L-N-E-S. Thank you. Um, sorry, would you be able to spell that uh, one more time, please? It cut out a little bit. Carlos, C-A-R-L-O-S, Bulnes, B-U-L-N-E-S. Okay, great, thank you. Um, would um, um, Agent Clark, um, Inspector Jordan, and um, Mr. Bolnes, would you all be able to raise your right hand? Sure. Thank you. Uh, do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you are about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you God or under penalty of perjury? And please state your name before your response. Carlos Bulnes. Yes. Um, Agent Clark. Agent Clark, I do. Inspector Jordan. Inspector Jordan, I do. Thank you. Great. Uh, uh, Agent Clark or Inspector Jordan, um, who will be reading uh, statement of charges? I will, sir. Thank you. Inspector Jordan. On August uh, 5th, at approximately uh, 11.45 p.m., I, Inspector Jordan, along with Agent Clark, visited the establishment known as Playbook, located at 3700 German Hill Road, to ensure compliance of the mayoral executive order issued to prevent the spread of COVID-19. Upon our approach uh, to the establishment, we could hear loud music coming from the deck of the establishment. Upon further inspection, we observed the DJ situated at the threshold of the deck and facing the street. This was a violation of their license, which specifies first floor of premises as a tavern restaurant, not including live entertainment slash dancing. Furthermore, the deck was found to be overcrowded as the tables were not positioned six feet apart per the temporary use and occupancy permit for outdoor table service, which specifies they can have eight tables in order to promote social distancing. We addressed the violations with Mr. Carlos Bulnes and instructed him to make the appropriate changes in order to be in compliance. Thank you. Inspector. Mr. Previs, any questions for Inspector Jordan? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Inspector Jordan, you were at the premises to ensure uh, compliance with the executive order, is that correct? Yes, sir. You were not there as a result of a 311 complaint? Uh, no, not for this particular case, no. Thank you. Now, you, you indicated that the music was loud yes uh can you describe the surrounding area of the playbook isn't isn't it true that there's a gas station to the uh north of the establishment yes and on the other side there's a funeral home okay and across the street there, there's uh dundalk avenue is right there yes and that's uh, two lanes, both directions, with uh, a boulevard, I believe? Yes. And is there a strip shopping center to the one corner of the other side of Dundalk Avenue? Uh, I believe so. Okay. And did you did you uh, listen or observe music or, or listen for sound across Dundalk Avenue? No, uh, but I did park approximately a block away behind which, the establishment on the other side where there's actual homes. Okay. And 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 what you could hear music when? As I approached. Okay, so as not from a block away, but as you approach the uh the, the playbook. Well from a block away as I approached. Okay. And was we heard last week about that out, outdoor speakers are totally acceptable on Broadway. Um, 
there's there's no prohibition about having outdoor speakers, so there's no prohibition about being able to hear music outside. Is that correct? Oh, that's uh, I wouldn't be able to answer that. Okay. It is isn't your concern as a as a liquor board inspector whether the music is um, disturbing the peace, as opposed to you can just hear it. Well, if it's loud enough that I can hear and I'm parked uh, across a, a resident a home, I you know it, it would be disturbing the peace. Why is that? If, if I could hear and I'm parked across, I was parked across a home. Okay, well, what was it about the music that you found disturbing? It was 11.45 p.m. What night of the week was this? Uh, I would have to look at a calendar on August 5th. Uh, I couldn't tell you without looking. If the board will note, it was a Wednesday. Well, August 5th, 2020 was a Wednesday. Oh, thank you. I would agree with that. Okay. Um, all right. So that if you can hear below other traffic noise and other uh, ambient noise, music, you, you find that disturbing? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, Tell me about the the DJ. I'm not really sure I understand when you testified that a DJ was at the threshold of the patio. Yes, and there's three pictures attached with the discovery, and you can um, see that there is a DJ situated on the threshold. The, the pictures. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for talking over you. Okay, the pictures on the liquor board website are essentially un unobservable. So can you describe for me um, where this is? Is it in the inside of the premises or on the patio? It's on the threshold uh, and they can be viewed better if, if they once printed, you can see them larger, but the DJ was on the threshold. Okay, I, I'm 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 not understanding the term threshold. Um, in relation to the front door, is it inside the front door or outside the front door? Between the interior and exterior. Okay, so that would be in a vestibule. Uh, no, half of the equipment or part of the equipment was outside. Okay, and what part was that? There's a table with, uh, a, you know, it's, uh, DJ equipment. Okay. It was on the patio? It wasn't completely on the patio. It was on the threshold. Okay. So I, I'm assuming from your answer that the front door was open and part of the equipment was in the vestibule and part was on the patio. Is that what you're saying? Uh, this establishment has, I believe, two doors which face a patio deck. Right. And the this equipment was situated uh, on between the interior and exterior of one of the two double doors. Okay, so I, I guess what you're saying is none of the equipment was within the most interior door but some of the equipment was within the, the the area between the two doors? Is that what you're saying? I'm saying the equipment was between the interior and exterior threshold. Okay, gotcha. Now, you said some of it came out in front of the front door, out into the patio, is that what you're saying? Uh, partially, yes. Okay. All right, now. Um, you said there's a TMP permit for this patio? Yes. Um, is that in the packet? I do not believe it is. Uh, okay. Okay. 
So do you know what the TMP permit says, Inspector Jordan? I believe when I wrote this violation, I, uh, I did look at it. Um, and if uh, you let me look at my report for one second, it says that, uh, oh, the tables have to be, it was supposed to be eight tables. And what we saw more than eight tables. How many tables did you see? Uh, hold on one second, if you can give me a second to look back. Okay, so when we arrived, I believe I, we saw approximately 12 tables over the eight table limit. Okay, and you're testifying without a copy of the TMP permit in front of you that the TMP permit specifically says no more than eight tables? Or was that just a drawing attached to it? Or what? what, what oh, tells us Sir, uh, oh, I'm very confident that when I wrote this report and prior to writing the violation, uh, I looked at that permit. Okay, but, but did it specifically say no more than eight tables or were there just eight tables on a drawing? Uh, I don't recall, sir. Okay, and the six feet apart, is that something that's in the TMP permit? Uh, without having that in front of me, I don't recall. Okay, and uh, did you know people sitting at any of these tables? Yes. Yeah. Okay. But you, you didn't write them up for having more than six people at a table. That's correct, right? For the deck being overcrowded. I, I don't understand that answer. Where, did, did you note that people were, that more than six people were at any given table? Oh, yes. There, there was more than six people at any given table. All right. What tables were they? specifically which tables i wouldn't be able to tell you at this time but th there's nothing in the liquor board packet here that says there were more than six people at any table how how, how do we know that to be uh, an accurate recollection but as you can see on the first picture i attached if you print out the picture you can see the amount of people that were sitting uh, sitting on the deck. My apologies. I, I I can't tell anything from these photographs that are online. It's just are, are there actual photographs that are being put in evidence that? Uh, yes, sir. If uh, once I apologize, you can't see them from the website. But once printed, you can see them. Inspector okay. Jordan, Inspector Jordan, are you referring to the top picture? The first picture in the packet? Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. So is there a photograph that you that you have that you can observe right now, Inspector Jordan? Oh yes, I have one in front of me. Okay. And 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 it, Although I can't see it, is there is there somewhere in that photograph that there's more than six people at any given table? Uh, yeah, I would say so. Yes. And where's that? At the very end of the deck. Okay. From what I right, see. I I'm sorry. I didn't mean from to cut what you off. I see on the picture, and also from my recollection, there was at a, a few tables there was more than that amount. Okay, thank you. I have no further questions. Okay, uh, Commissioner Guy, any questions? No, I have no questions. Okay. Um, would you like to put on any uh, evidence, Mr. Priebus? No, Mr. Chairman, I'd just like to be heard. Please, go proceed. Thank you. Um, with regard to the, I'm going to take them in reverse order, the, the charge of 4.14a live entertainment, uh, the testimony is that there was a DJ 
and that that DJ, his equipment was mostly in the vestibule and may have spilled out past the front door onto the patio. Um, the fact that there's a DJ uh, is not sufficient to make out a charge under Rule 4.14a. And the reason being is that if you read B, uh, it indicates as follows. Well, let me back up and read A. A licensee shall only provide, quote unquote, live entertainment or special amusement if he slash she has obtained, quote, live entertainment, unquote, approval by the city and this board. B, examples of live entertainment include musical acts, parentheses, including karaoke, theatrical acts, parentheses, stand-up comedy, plays, reviews, dancing, magic acts, disc jockeys, parentheses, performing with amplified microphones and equipment, and similar activities. There is absolutely no testimony, no evidence of any performing with amplified microphones. And on that basis, I would ask that 4.14a be dismissed and that to the extent that the DJ uh, serves as a basis for a violation of 4.16 or 3.12, uh, that that aspect would also be dismissed. With okay. regard, I'm sorry. I said, okay, thank you. Okay, with, with regard to illegal conduct, um, there, there are two components to rule 4.16. Uh, that rule reads, a licensee may not commit or allow the commission on the licensed premises of an act that is contrary to any federal, state, or local statute, law, or ordinance. And then secondly, or that is against the public peace, safety, health, welfare, quiet, or morals. Uh, the second clause is very similar to rule 3.12 general welfare that says licensees shall operate their establishments in such a manner as to avoid disturbing the peace, safety, health, quiet, and to promote the general welfare of the community. Now, in addition to the, the DJ, uh, I note in each of the identical paragraphs, the following. One, unreasonably loud music. Two, DJ. Uh, three, overcrowded tables, tables not six feet apart, um, and eight tables. Um, so with regard to uh, both charges, uh, I note the following. Um, the TMP permit is not in evidence, so we're not really sure what it says and whether that language is uh, advisory or mandatory. So I'm not sure that the tables being closer than six feet apart uh, to the extent that they were measured, which there's no evidence that they were, uh, would be a violation of um, illegal conduct or uh, based on not following the, either the TMP permit or the or the mayor's executive order. Um, there's an indication that they can have eight tables, but again, we don't know what the the the, the, uh, the, the TMP permit requires or prohibits. Um, as far as persons, there's there's no indication in the actual charge. That the violation is the that there are more people than 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 is allowed, but rather that the the tables are too close together. Um, so if you take any of those aspects of the allegation in the charge, be it the tables uh, not being six feet apart or being more than eight tables, uh, they do not support a charge for illegal conduct. And finally, we have. The, the amount of noise, um, again, you have to consider the area that this establishment is in. It's in a commercial area. Inspector Jordan did testify that behind the, the, the commercial area on Dundalk Avenue, there are houses. Uh, she indicated that she could hear the music, 
But again, it, it appears from prior precedent of this board that outdoor speakers are not per se prohibited. It, it's an issue of when the noise becomes a disturbance to others. And here we have no evidence of any disturbance to others. There's no 311 complaint. Uh, it, it's only that she could hear the music from beyond the confines of the establishment, which is clearly going to happen when we have outdoor service and, and music playing outside, which I understand is, is perfectly allowable as long as it's not unreasonable or disturbing. For those reasons, I ask that the board dismiss each of the three charges, 4.16 illegal conduct, 3.12 general welfare, and 4.14A live entertainment. Thank you, Mr. Creech. Mr. Blendy, do we have any public comment? Mr. Chair, if I may for a second, just to give a quick statement. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I don't think uh, Chief Chris Amalis has been sworn. Let's swear in the, the chief, please. Okay. Um, please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you are about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. God or under penalty of perjury? Thank you. I do. Uh, Mr. Chair, just real quick, I just wanted to make a couple statements. Um, in the beginning of this licensee's uh, existence, um, Mr. Carlos, you could say, showed total disregard for our rules and regulations. However, throughout the years, if you see, his record has gotten a lot better. He has um, been very cooperative with the agency and has taken um, a lot of steps and corrective measures that I've suggested he has taken and, and complied with within usually three days. So I just wanted to, just to let the board know that he has been working in the last two years to really um, do the best he can as far as complying with our um, recommendations. Thank you, Chief. Mr. Priebus, do you have any questions of the Chief? No, that sounded good to me. Thank you. <laughs> uh, thank you. Uh, Commissioner Guy, do you have any questions of the chief? No, I don't. Okay. Well, um, uh, Mr. Ch Mr. Chairman, I think you wanted me to check with the public. Yes, please. Thank you. Mr. Um, if there are any members of the public who wish to testify uh, on this matter, please use the raise your hand function right now. Mr. Chair, I do not see any members of the public using the raise your hand function. Okay. Thank you. Um, so uh, based upon the uh, materials the charging documents and the testimony, I, I do find a violation of 4.16 legal conduct on August 5th, 2020. Um, I also find a violation of Rule 3.12 general welfare on August 5th, 2020. And I also find a violation of Rule 4.14a live entertainment on August 5, 2020. Um, I uh, appreciate very much the Chief's um, uh, testimony, and this is a licensee that has had a bit of a troubled past, but it sounds like he's turned the page and is heading in the right direction. Given that we have um, uh, been, I think, fairly reasonable and fair in our, um, in our, our, our penalties, I'm going to remain consistent with that and uh, would um, uh, uh, assess a $100 fine for each violation. Uh, with 30 days to pay. Commissioner Guy? Commissioner Guy, uh, I too would find violation of rule 4. Point, based, based on uh, the testimony that was given and the evidence presented, I would also find violation of rule 4.16 illegal conduct, violation of rule 3.1 3.12 general welfare and violation of rule 4.14 uh, live entertainment which uh, took place on august the 5th uh, i would concur with the fine of a hundred dollars uh, for each payable in 30 days Thank you. Exhibits for the record exhibit number one violation report inspector jordan exhibit number two mayoral executive order dated 7 24 20. Thank you. I think that concludes today's uh, docket. Uh, I hope everyone stays safe and uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Mr. Blendy, you have something to add? 
Yeah, I, I was on mute. My apologies, Mr. Chairman. Uh, licensee will receive a penalty assessment notice in the mail with further instructions. Thank you very much. Thank you. And Mr. Chairman, you are correct. There are no, no additional matters before you. Thank you, Mr. Blenny. Have a great day. Off the record. All, all business being concluded um, for the board this date, February 11th, 2021. The board stands in recess until February 25th, 2021. Off the record. Okay. Off the record.